next day that no recipe required and it is another meal kit uh, review. Time for another meal kit review. Today we're going to do a um, Hello Chef. Look at this nice little box that uh, that came in the, um, or bag, that came in the box. I've got a uh, crushed peppercorn steak recipe to do. We got uh, some sirloin, we're going to cook off some cream kale and some potatoes. This is classic meat and potatoes. It'll be interesting because I've tried um, I've tried steak, peppercorn steak from a couple other um, meal kits. We'll see how they uh, we'll see how they compare. We'll see how easy or hard it is to cook and obviously how tasty it is in the end. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to unpack. Um, we're going to start our prep work. We're going to start our cooking and then of course at the end we will uh, we'll give it a taste. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys so we're going to get started on our steak peppercorn. I just took these um, they're two sirloin steaks. They look uh, maybe about five ounces each or so. Um, pulled them out of the package, dried them off with a paper towel. I'm going to set them aside to just uh, come up to room temperature. And then we're going to prep our ingredients here. I've got some uh, potatoes. They sent a bunch of these new potatoes. It says to go ahead and peel them and then cut them into wedges. Frankly, if you wanted to leave the skins on, I think you could um, you could easily leave those skins on. But go in half, go again, and these are our wedges. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting our potatoes off camera. Next bit of prep is they sent this package of kale. And this is going to make our creamed kale. You got a big kind of stem or a rib in the, uh, in the kale that you don't really want. I find best way to do it, just grab the thick end of that kale, it'll come right off, the stem will come right off. You're left with the, uh, the leaves, and there's a little bit more stem up here, you can pull that off. And then once you get these leaves off, we're just going to come back and give them a bit of a rough chop, tear them into like, we're tearing them into about one inch pieces or so. Again, I'm going to finish that kale off camera because it's kind of boring to watch me chop kale. Then finally we've got a um, <coughs> excuse me, we've got a shallot here. And we're gonna dice up the shallot by taking the top and the bottom off. Throw those in the garbage bowl, wrapper, or the uh, skin in the bowl, cut it in half, peel the outside layer, and then once again just go through the shallot with a quick little chop, like so. I'm going to do the rest of the shallot off camera, but again, this is going to go into our sauce. I got a little bowl right here. So I'm going to come back, or I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish my potatoes, my shallot, my kale, and then we're going to come back and start cooking. Okay, guys, so I got our vegetables chopped. We're also going to uh, go ahead and take our peppercorns here, and it says give them a, uh, a little bit of a crush with a mallet or with a heavy pan. I actually like a wine bottle that I actually just fill with water. And you're, just, you're just trying to loosely chop, or sorry, crush those peppercorns. It won't take much. Those feel pretty good. If you need to do some more when they're out of the bag, that's fine. Just put them in another Ziploc bag. Um, the other thing I made a mistake before: skin on on the potatoes. I misread what the um, what the direction said. Um, we're going to go ahead and take our potatoes. We're going to throw a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on them. I've got an oven preheating at 425. It doesn't say on the card what to roast the potatoes at, but I'm going 425. I'm also going to go a little bit of olive oil on the potatoes. And I've got a baking sheet here that I just put some foil on. They clean up a little bit easier. A little bit of cooking spray on that sheet get the potatoes covered in the olive oil and the salt and the pepper. And then we're going to spread them out, make sure they're in a single layer and kind of not touching each other. There's one I didn't even slice. We're going to go ahead and slice that one. Oops. And then the card says roast them for 30, 40 minutes. I think that's about right at 425, 450, something like that. Um, and we're going to check them halfway through and uh, after about 15 minutes, 20 minutes and give them a little toss. Okay, so our potatoes are in the oven. Uh, next step is to cook our kale, which we chopped down into like inch long pieces. It says go ahead and take a, uh, a pan, um, put a tablespoon of butter in it. Now, note they did not include the butter in the package, so 
If you're gonna do this recipe, or at least you're gonna follow this step, you gotta have some butter. If you don't have butter, you can probably use olive oil just fine. It says to um, cook the kale until it wilts down about uh, four or five minutes. Um, you know, it'll get at least probably a quarter of the size um, as it cooks down. You just want to turn it over once in a while, um, every minute or so, and we'll get this uh, we'll get this cooked down and come back. Okay, so our kale is now cooked down four or five minutes. You can see how much um, it's reduced down. You could keep going. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's absolutely fine now. It's still going to have a little bit of bite to it. You could, um, if you wanted it finer, you could also take it out and chop it up. But what we're going to do now is just turn off the heat, set it aside um, for just a minute or two, and hit it. I got to shuffle around my kitchen for my stuff. Hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're going to let it um, let it just sit until we're ready to make um, the creamy uh, kale. So. Do that. We're still just kind of waiting for our uh, potatoes to get a little bit further along. All right, so my potatoes have cooked for about 15 minutes or so, and they're starting to brown up. If um, if you've got a knife, you can go ahead and do the knife test, and when they go in easily, they are cooked through. Some of these, like this one, is still pretty firm. So I think these are going to need another 10 minutes or so. Time to put them back in. You can give them a little toss, right, and get maybe the other side. Oops, a little browner. You still want to make sure they fall on one layer. Throw them back in the oven, and it's time to start up our steaks. All right, guys, so I've got our steaks right here. I brought them up to room temperature. They've been sitting out dry. I just salt and pepper both sides. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil to a good heavy gauge pan. Get it around, and then the pan should be nice and hot. We should hear a nice, loud sizzle when we lay our steaks in. There we go. If you don't, pull the steak up and let it heat up some more. We're going to lay it down. The um, directions say cook it for 45 minutes, uh, sorry, 47 minutes, your desired doneness. Mine's going to be on the light side of that. I'm probably going to go like three minutes per side. All right, so I highly recommend one of these um, screens to keep the splatter down. I highly recommend putting the, um, the fan on above your stove as well because there is going to be a fair amount of smoke. If you're looking for that nice char, on this, um, this side. I let mine go for about three minutes or so. I'm going to turn them both over. You can move them to a different part of the pan, too. And um, we're going to cover them back up, or not cover them back up, put the screen back on, let them go another three minutes on this side. Okay, so I think mine are just about done, seared all around. If you want to, this is kind of a uh, really thick one. You could also stick it on the side, get some char on the sides as well. Um, also, this one is a little thicker than this one, so I'm going to take this one off just a minute or so before um, before the other one. Um, you're looking to get them, again, I like kind of medium rare or so. Um, and you want to make sure your pan, this dark brown, is absolutely fine, but you don't want black. You don't want it to scorch. So, I washed the cutting board. I pulled the steaks off. We're going to let them rest while we make our sauce. I turn the heat down while we're doing this to again protect the scorching of the pan. It's already super hot in there. A touch more olive oil. Our shallots, which are going to release a bunch of flavor. And then our, um, our peppercorns to taste. For me, I'm going to add almost all of them, keeping maybe just a little bit to do, a, um, to do kind of a garnish at the end. My heat's all the way on low, again, because I don't want anything to scorch. I can turn the heat back up if I need to. And I'm just going to let these shallots, per the directions, soften up for about two minutes. Then we're going to add some um, stock, or some concentrated stock, and some water. All right, so a couple minutes have, has gone by. Our shallots have, uh, have softened up. This is a uh, package of beef, beef stock concentrate that we're going to squeeze into there. That's going to pack, I think, a ton of flavor. And then a half a cup of water we're going to add. And this is probably where, you know, I have my heat on low. We're going to bring the heat back up. And the water that's in there is going to help us scrape up all these yummy bits that are on the bottom of the pan and help make our sauce. I got a spatula here. Wooden spoon is actually the best thing to use for this. But in just a minute or so, all those bits and pieces are going to come up. We're going to reduce the sauce by half, 
And while we're doing this and our steaks are resting, we're gonna cream our kale. All right, guys, so I put my kale back on the heat. We got our sauce reducing. I'm taking my potatoes out of the oven. I just give them the, uh, the knife test. They are nice and, uh, nice and tender. I'm gonna set those aside for just a minute. Our sauce is almost reduced by half. We're gonna let that go another minute or so. We're first gonna put a package of sour cream into our kale here. Do, do, do. And that's gonna mix in and essentially form, I think, a creamed kale. Okay, we're gonna take the heat off. There's not a ton of cream in there, but we're gonna now kill the, um, kill the heat, kinda let everything settle in there. I'll give it a quick taste before we serve it to make sure it's okay with salt and pepper. This one is. I'm gonna set that back there. This is now reduced by half, so I'm gonna turn the heat off. Our other package of sour cream that Hello Chef sent us goes into our sauce here to make a nice creamy peppercorn sauce. I'm gonna stir that in. My spatula or my tongs got very hot there. It's important to do this off the heat so the, um, so the cream doesn't break or separate. Um, it will stay warm for you know, at least five or six minutes as you're getting it mixed in and then onto the steaks. So, our kale is ready, our potatoes are ready, our sauce is now ready. Give that a taste too. Mm, that's nice. Um, our steaks have rested. If you got a little juice like that, go ahead, throw it into the sauce for a little extra flavor. Uh, let's go ahead and plate this up. All right, guys, let's go ahead and plate up our dish here. We've got that creamed kale right there. We've got a few Ooh, potatoes are still nice and hot. I'm going to stack those up. I love this, um, it's almost french fry like potatoes. Um, style of cooking, really tasty. Stack those nice and high. And then we've got our steaks right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'll slice them as they do in the recipe. Sorry, in the, uh, in the card. And certainly, you know, I think when you, when you serve you know, a steak like this, then it, um, you actually eat a little bit less, you know, sliced up like this as opposed to serving the whole enchilada at one point. To me, let me show you, that is kind of perfectly medium rare. I'm gonna try and reassemble this on our plate, like so. Fanned out a little bit. And then, I wish I had a rag. I got a napkin there, how's that? This is our peppercorn sauce. Just give that a quick stir. Make that right down the middle there. And then, any of those fresh peppercorns that we stayed or that we kept, you can just kind of throw right on top as well for a little extra garnish. And there we go. Oops, how about that? Beautiful little uh, steak. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All right guys, so we finished our Hello Fresh peppercorn steak with potatoes and kale. I gotta say, I already tried the, uh, tried the potatoes. I actually really like them. I've done these um, before myself. I think they're super, super tasty. If you have a little herbs, throw some herbs on there too after they come out of the oven. That is, uh, that's really nice. I'll try a little bit of the kale. Tastes like kale. Um, the sour cream gives it um, obviously a little bit of sourness, a little bit of tang, which is nice. It's not exactly like cream spinach um, creaminess. Um, it's much lighter creamy than, uh, than that. Uh, but pretty tasty and it would go well with the, uh, with the sirloin here. Let's give the steak. Mm. So the steak is really nice, it's tender. Tastes like a good sirloin, um, which is what it is. And I'm still getting some of the crunchiness of those uh, peppercorns. I really like that they started with whole peppercorns, let you crush it. You can keep it as coarse, as fine as you like. I kind of like that toothiness of them. And you know, they give, uh, they give the sauce a little bit of spice. So, 
I really like this. I did the steak about three minutes. I like that medium rare. You can cook it longer. You can throw it in the oven and get it to well done if you really want to. But this works together. It's basic, simple uh, steak and potatoes dish. It took me about an hour to make, uh, mostly because the potatoes take uh, take that long, uh, or almost that long. Um, easy to do, directions were pretty good. One little misstep on the uh, temperature in the oven, I would use like 425. I did use 425 for the potatoes, but tasty, give it a try. I'll throw a link to the uh, HelloFresh on the website, on the video, give it a try. Let me know how it goes in the comments, and I'll see you next time. I know recipe required. All right, that was my review of HelloFresh steak peppercorn. Actually, pretty nice recipe, it took a little bit of time, but very solid meat and potato dish. Everything went together, that kale potato steak combo and the sauce was nice too. Give it a try, let me know how it goes. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.